Welcome back to Monitors Unbox. Today we're completing our look into HDR dimming zone performance with a comparison between the gold standard in HDR illumination technology, OLED, and the best that LCD can offer with over 1,000 full array local dimming zones. This is a true heavyweight battle. We're talking true HDR hardware here. None of this edge lit dimming garbage, or even worse, the dreaded display HDR 400 panel. I think most people choosing to buy a high-end gaming monitor in 2022 will be faced with the decision between these two technologies. OLED is obviously very popular, and we do have a few solid options for gamers these days, with more to come later this year. And for LCDs, I think we're going to mostly be seeing stuff in the 1000 to 1200 zone range this generation. It could go higher with future monitors, but for now, many of the true HDR products will be sitting around 1000 zones, priced to compete with the OLEDs of today. Hopefully this side-by-side -side video with every scene captured using the same camera settings will help you choose one way or the other. Representing Team OLED is the LG C2, which we recently reviewed over on the Hard Run Box channel. Now, we could have chosen the AW3423DW here instead, but went for the C2 as it has the same resolution and aspect ratio as our LCD contender. Nevertheless, as we're mostly focusing on black levels and dimming ability, the results for the C2 and Alienware should be virtually identical. The C2, like all OLEDs, has per pixel local dimming capabilities, so at this resolution there is effectively 8,294,400 dimming zones, with each zone covering one pixel. Representing Team LCD is the Samsung Odyssey Neo G7, which has 1,196 full array local dimming zones arranged in a 46 by 26 grid, which looks something like this. Each zone deals with approximately 7,000 pixels, though there is some overlap, meaning the OLED contender has more than three orders of magnitude tighter dimming capabilities. That's a big difference, more orders of magnitude than the difference between 1196 zones and edge lit dimming, but we'll be in diminishing returns territory here. There are a few other notes to make about the Neo G7. Samsung are using VA LCD technology here, which has an inherently high native contrast ratio compared to IPS monitors, which is the other main panel tech used for HDR LCDs. A 1000 plus zone VA monitor will have better contrast capabilities than the same zone count on an IPS, so what you're seeing here won't apply as well to IPS panels. We'll probably revisit this when new IPS contenders appear. Local dimming algorithms can also differ between monitors. Samsung uses what I describe as a contrast first dimming system, but we'll explore what that means throughout the comparisons. Anyway, let's get into it. So time to invite voiceover Tim back in to analyze some of the shots we have. Hello, it's voiceover Tim here again. Good to be back to have a look at more HDR monitor comparisons. And of course, what we've got here is a look at OLED versus the 1196 local dimming zones. We're just going to once again start with some test patterns and really breeze through these sections because there's not a whole lot that you'll see that's different between the OLED monitor and our LCD monitor. Of course, there are some noticeable differences, things like the color temperature that you're seeing here for the OLED versus the LCD monitor. A few differences there, of course, depending on the calibration and camera settings. Uh, we are using the same camera settings on both sides, but uh, different monitors can activate the camera a bit differently. But primarily what we're looking for are things like the blooming and dimming capabilities of these monitors. And really, once we've got a thousand zones on the LCD side showing this test pattern of all sorts of different luminance levels, there's not a whole lot that's different in terms of how we're seeing these black levels. So these sections in here are very similar between each monitor, and that's simply because the LCD side is very good at dimming. And as I've talked about in previous videos on this channel, Samsung are using a what I'd call contrast first local dimming algorithm, which means that to show you know these bright areas, they're trying to minimize the blooming that's around them, which does impact brightness. Some of these sections aren't quite as bright as we might like to see, and are in fact dimmer on the LCD side versus the OLED side, but that does prevent uh, a lot of dimming impacting the black levels that we're seeing between these scenes. Um, the really main difference that we see for these particular monitors is when we look at the LCDs, if we ignore the flickering here, which is just a camera related issue, there is some vignetting, which I talked a little bit about in our previous video, a bit of haloing, which means that for these darker sections, we sort of see a brighter part in the middle of the image and then we've got a few dimmer edges and sections around the edges here and that's like I was talking about that's due to the dimming algorithm they're trying to minimize blooming into these areas up here so Samsung are 
dimming the edges of these squares a little bit, which is noticeable. Over on the OLED side, obviously there's no need to do that. So we get the full and proper uniformity right up to the edge of these particular squares here. Of course, the rest is black on the outside as well, which looks great. Uh, and so I guess that's one major difference that we're seeing just at the start here. Moving into the 10% window test now, and there are a few differences that we're looking at here. One is, of course, the OLED is actually a dimmer monitor on this side compared to the LCD on this side, um, which you can sort of tell in this image a little bit here. There's a bit of camera bloom on the right-hand side as well. It's very subtle. But generally speaking, both of these technologies are very good at dimming this sort of image. The LCD has a very slight amount of blooming around the edges of this particular uh, square, which you don't get as much of on the OLED on that side. Obviously, the OLED has per pixel local dimming, so there's no real bloom that's visible. Uh, a tiny little bit visible on the LCD image, but apart from that, it is very difficult to discern the differences between these two particular images. With the dual corner box test, you'll have to look very closely to notice the differences between the OLED and the LCD sides of the image. With OLED, obviously, once again, per pixel dimming, so there's really no blooming in these areas on the side of either of these boxes. Tiny bit of camera bloom because these elements are very bright in the upper and bottom corners. But apart from that, the OLED does perfectly show blacks in the center of the screen. The LCD with 1196 local dimming zones is also capable of perfectly dimming the center of this screen. So the center section looks identical on either side. The LCD does have more blooming that extends about this far as we've talked about previously. So it can be a bit hard to see um, from this particular footage depending on the type of screen you're looking at. But Generally speaking, what we see here is a little bit more bloom in these upper corners and the bottom corner for this particular test. But really, it does look very similar to the OLED image in most other areas. The test that I think shows perhaps the most noticeable difference between the OLED and LCD sides is the checkerboard test. When we're looking at OLEDs, obviously the black sections can be fully dimmed right up to the edges of the white sections, and the white sections can be fully illuminated right up to the edges of the black sections. And there's really no crossover between the white and the dark areas, simply because we get per pixel local dimming. There's no blooming or haloing to worry about. The black sections are as black as they should be. The white sections are as white as they should be. When we move over to the LCD side, this LCD image does look much better than we've seen from edge lit and 96 zone examples. If you go back and watch our previous videos in this series, you'll quite clearly see these black and dark areas being significantly more illuminated than what we're showing right here. However, there is some illumination in the dark areas. You'll see here there's a little bit of bleed from the white sections into the dark sections, which creates a bit of blooming around here, for example, from this zone, a little bit here from this bottom zone. It's very hard to see, admittedly, in the image as we're showing it right here. However, I think you can sort of see that blooming effect coming into place here. The center section is a little bit dimmer, but generally speaking, this black that we're seeing here is a bit more illuminated than the pure black we're getting from the OLED on the left-hand side, um, which does make a bit of a difference, but obviously as well, the white sections are more illuminated on the LCD side than what we see on the OLED side. So it's a bit of a trade-off either way when comparing these sorts of technologies as they are. I figured I'd raise the exposure for this image on both sides just to more clearly illustrate the illumination of blacks that we're seeing from the LCD image, even with the exposure bumped up quite substantially, while of course these parts of the OLED image do get brighter. The blacks remain relatively black, which is quite good and pretty much as we would want and expect from that particular image. Whereas on the LCD side, you can clearly see that the black levels are illuminated, which again, it's not going to quite look like this when you're viewing these sorts of images normally. Uh, depends on how dark the room is as to how noticeable these sections will be. But yes, there is illumination for the LCD image and less illumination on the OLED side. Now we're moving into some real world video examples of HDR content that you can find on YouTube. One point that I did want to make as we start looking at these comparisons is that we have changed the camera settings slightly when comparing the OLED and LCD relative to our previous videos that we've made on the channel. We're showing a greater amount of dynamic range in each of these images compared to what was shown previously. So we can get a better look at highlights and the sort of brightness differences in addition to the dark differences, which I think is really important for these high end LCD technologies, which is why these images may look a bit different compared to what you've seen previously. I just want to pause on the usual raising of the honey scene to show how similar the LCD and OLED images appear 
with the settings as we've shown here. The highlights, very similar on either side. The LCD is a bit brighter for sections like this and up here as well compared to the OLED side. But in terms of the dimming ability, the LCD does have quite a good ability to dim the dark sections around the outside, which is pretty much exactly how it should be. Now the OLED I think does produce slightly better contrast, as you'll see the better ability to dim the central section of this, as well as a little bit as well in the, I guess the tiny little bit of honey that's being pulled up here compared to on the LCD side where that doesn't have quite as much contrast in the particular image. But generally speaking, I think whether you go with the OLED side or the LCD side with 1196 zones, the general appearance of the blacks in the background are quite similar. You can see a very slight amount of blooming on the LCD side if we're looking right up in this top corner compared to over here. Slightly raised blacks of the LCD versus the OLED, but it is very subtle. I think you'll find it quite hard to notice this in practice. It's really other areas of the image where you'll see those differences. The OLED, again, better able to dim in this section of liquid here. LCD, not quite as good. I'm still very impressed with the LCD's dimming ability. I think the ability to have over a thousand zones plus VA technology does provide us with near OLED-like black levels, which is something that I've seen a lot of people commenting on when buying the Neo G7 and Neo G8, that in a lot of images, the black levels do look very good between these two images. And I think with the addition, additional dynamic range that we're showing here, you can really see that yeah, in some images, they kind of trade blows as to which image looks better and which image looks worse. And I think that a lot of the scenarios where typically you'd expect an OLED to exceed expectations and look very, very strong, the LCD is really just as strong in many areas. And yeah, I could pause and nitpick a few sort of raised blacks for the LCDs compared to things that the OLED is doing. But I think when you're watching a video like this, you're generally speaking going to see a very similar presentation on either side, at least in what I'd classes normal viewing conditions. The one exception to this is this scene, and we're going to show Christmas lights obviously later in this video as well, but I think once we get down to about here, in terms of the black levels that we're seeing on the screen here, you'll notice that on the OLED side we do have effectively infinite contrast ratio as you'd expect. So in between all of these tiny red particles, so in here for example and around and again it's very hard to draw in between these tiny particles, but, but you get the picture right? We're seeing dark, dark blacks, pure black in between all the tiny little particles because the per pixel dimming is able to simply illuminate the pixels where we're seeing those red images. Over here on the LCD side, there is some raised black levels in between each of the fine particles. I think it's most noticeable in this section comparing to this section on this side. You'll notice in between that there's just a little bit of raised blacks uh, around those particular images. You'll see again at the bottom part of the image over here, raised blacks, more illumination than what you get on the OLED side of things, where we really are getting those pure blacks in between the different particles that we're seeing on screen. In this next scene, we get more examples of how the dimming capabilities compare between LCD and OLED, and also the differences in brightness and luminance for brighter scenes. You'll see something like this, where the LCD tech doesn't quite have the ability to dim as well as the OLED tech. For example, around this upper section of the light bulb, on the LCD side compared to the OLED side. Some of it is processing as well as the dimming capabilities, but we simply don't get quite the same level of tightness in dimming ability on the OLED side, on the LCD side, I should say, compared to the OLED side. However, as we move through a lot of these scenes, you'll notice that there's not really that much separating the OLED and the LCDs. This LCD, the Samsung Odyssey Neo G7, isn't what I'd class as one of the brightest examples of LCDs for HDR that we've seen going around, but it certainly does have good levels of brightness, which again, looks fairly similar on the OLED side as well. OLEDs are not known for their brightness, but these two particular matchups, I feel, are very similar. You'll see here the differences in the processing that we're using for this video, just showing a bit more dynamic range in a lot of these scenes. Now, if we pause here on these red balls to show the differences between the illumination technologies, again, on the OLED side, you're not going to see any blooming around things like this because per pixel local dimming, we get pure blacks, as of course you would expect. On the LCD side, though, you'll see that the dimming capabilities of this Neo G7 are very good and certainly prevent a lot of raised blacks. Around something like this element here, there is a very small amount of raised black sort of in these sections around here. It's very hard to spot. I think if we delete some of the markers, you might just be able to see it. But again, the Samsung tuning does 
intend to minimize bloom and has done so in these sorts of scenarios, which I think delivers a presentation that looks very similar to what we see from the OLED side, which is of course very strong, very strong performance from the LCD contender. I think it's also worth pausing on this scene, which is quite a bright scene to show the differences in contrast for things that aren't just pure black. This bottom section here is very, very bright. We're showing it, of course, with more extended dynamic range than some of our previous HDR comparison videos. But you'll see that on the OLED side and the Neo G7 side that we're seeing very similar image quality. However, for some of these darker areas, like I'd sort of class in this section here, comparing it to the same section on the LCD side, you notice that the OLED is able to better dim in between some of these particular areas, like we're seeing, say, for example, here's bright, but that section here is dark. If we look over on this side, it's more raised blacks that we're seeing in that particular section of the image, which I think makes it look like a higher contrast image on the left hand side similar if we look at say for example the shirt that the guy the dj is wearing here a little bit more black a little bit more deeper and darker shadow content on this side compared to on the lcd side which again is just the dimming and processing capabilities that samsung's using for their particular monitor and as we continue to play you'll see similar things play out here's a much more even image i feel between the two sides again sort of the brightness and contrast capabilities are very similar in some sex scenes and sections and going to be a bit more favorable towards the OLED for contrast in other scenes. So it really just depends on the particular content that we're looking at. For again, I think this particular scene that we're looking with these piano scenes, I believe there's some drums coming up. It does feel a little bit darker on the OLED side than what we're seeing on the LCD side for those shadow details, but very similar between the two presentations. And I think that's really indicative of Samsung's strong processing and strong dimming capabilities from over a thousand zones. Again, if we show something like this, here's another scene where you'll see some differences in dimming capabilities between the two sides. So for example, here, when we're looking in between the, I don't know what you'd call it, splashes of paint, this section here does have raised black levels compared to what we see on the OLED side. You'll see that that's a very crisp, clean black image in that section there compared to what we're seeing on the LCD side. And again, a bit more blooming that's extending out into this section compared to this section on this side. It's probably gonna be very difficult to see a lot of these things in the YouTube video due to compression technology and your particular viewing conditions. If you're viewing in a darker environment, you're probably more able to spot some of these differences. But yeah, you'll see some blooming in these sections compared to no blooming on the OLED side. I think that's really the main advantage that we're seeing between these two particular images. However, again, we're seeing perhaps stronger highlights on the LCD image compared to the OLED image, depending on how you prefer your image to look. Next up, we have the Christmas light scenes. And this is really showing off the benefits of OLED technology because we've got very small, fine highlights, which OLED can use its per pixel local dimming to show in a really nice and pleasant environment. Whereas on the LCD side, we've got zones which need to illuminate more than just those fine element details. For example, when we pause on this scene and we're having a look at the general image quality, the LCD is able to dim quite substantial areas very well. For example, if we're looking in say this area around here at the bottom section of the image, it looks pretty dark. It looks pretty well dimmed and compares quite favorably to the similar zone over on the OLED side. And if you go back and you have a look at our edge lit dimmed images and 96 zones, substantial raised blacks in this section here, which makes this 1196 zone area look quite a bit better. However, if we're looking in some of the more problematic areas of this particular paused image, for example, this top section up here, which I think is the most noticeable comparison between LCD and OLED tech, the LCD to show these very bright highlights, these tiny little red LEDs on those Christmas lights, you'll see that it has to illuminate this entire section up the top here quite a bit, which shows raised black levels compared to on the OLED side, you'll see that in between all of those fine, tiny details that we're getting very dim blacks. And a lot of these, I guess, tree elements that you sort of see in between some of those very fine details, those are quite a bit more visible on the LCD side compared to on the OLED side where we get better shadow detail and some of those areas are darkened and dimmed as they perhaps should be. And you'll see similar things throughout the rest of the image as well. For example, if we're looking over here, this doesn't have quite as substantial raised blacks on the LCD side compared to the OLED side, but you'll still notice that in between each of those fine, tiny uh, particle elements, 
that we're seeing a few raised blacks, no raised blacks over on the LCD side. And as we keep moving through, you'll notice that the zones turning on and off can be quite noticeable on the LCD for this particular image, especially as we're moving around, whereas it looks really good and really perfect on the OLED side. Now, not every scene that you'll be looking at will be as I guess, favorable towards OLED tech is what we're looking at here with these bright Christmas lights. But sometimes you'll see scenes like this in space shows, for example, where you see a lot of uh, starry nights, bright, you know, illuminated skies with plenty of different small lights going on there. All of those uh, scenes do tend to look better on OLEDs compared to on LCDs. For example, if we pause here, again, a great example of what we were just talking about. This could be a starry night sky with lots of different lights being illuminated there. You'll see some blooming in this upper section in particular for the LCD compared to no blooming at all on the OLED side thanks to per pixel dimming. However, not all parts of the image look bad on the LCD side. When we've got these more sparse LEDs in this section, I think that looks quite similar to what we're seeing on the OLED side. Now, it doesn't look identical. We are still seeing some raised blacks. It can't completely switch off all of these zones because it does have to actually illuminate you know, all the different LEDs that are on screen. But generally speaking, what we're seeing is that when there's you know illumination of this sort of type in this bottom section, it does look quite similar to what we're seeing on the OLED side. Another thing that I think is important to note is that on the OLED side, generally in this scene, it is slightly brighter on the OLED side compared to the LCD side. It does depend on exactly the scene we're looking at as to which areas are going to be illuminated a bit better on the LCD compared to the OLED. But typically when we have fine bright elements, the OLED is really going to be able to show those as intended. Whereas on the LCD side, especially with this dimming algorithm from Samsung, it tends to not go super crazy with the brightness. I uh, tend to prefer minimizing bloom as I've talked about throughout this video, um, which does maybe limit the brightness that we're seeing down to the level of the OLED potentially a little bit dimmer, potentially brighter. It really just depends on the exact scene that we're looking at and the sort of elements that we're seeing. For example, I think there it's looking a bit brighter on the LCD side, but around here, some of those LED elements are fairly well illuminated on the OLED. In the final section, we are, of course, taking a look at 21 by 9 aspect ratio content, sort of showing how each of these technologies will dim the letterboxing at the top and bottom of the screen when you're viewing more cinematic aspect ratio content like you might see from a lot of films. In this particular scene, both the OLED and the 1196 zone LCD technology is able to very effectively dim the letterboxing elements, which means that on either side of the image that you're seeing here, really, you're not going to notice those black bars at the top and bottom, especially if you're viewing in a dark environment, it will just appear like the screen is the aspect ratio of the content itself. Occasionally, when there are bright elements at the bottom or top of the image, the LCD side will have a small amount of blooming into the letterboxing areas. But realistically speaking, it's not something that you'll notice substantially on either side. And yeah, the OLED side is a more high contrast image in a lot of the scenes that we're looking at, for example, what you've just seen and around here, a bit better shadow detail, in my opinion, uh, better and more accurate processing generally from the LG C2 compared to the Neo G7. But when we're talking about you know dimming those letterboxing elements, very similar on either side. And both of these screens are delivering quite a good HDR experience for this sort of content. It really just depends on what you're after in terms of the quality of HDR presentation. Are you more interested in black levels and shadows, in which case go OLED? If you're interested in potentially brighter highlights uh, and you don't want some of the downsides of OLED tech, then the LCD technology will be for you. Okay, so that does it for our comparison between OLED tech and 1196 zone full array dimming. I really wanted to dial down into the two top technologies in this video, so I didn't go through how edge lit dimming fares in comparison. Though, if you watch our videos previously in this series, uh, you'll get a very good idea of how bad edge lit looks even up against 1000 zone LCDs. To some of the most die-hard OLED fans, it's probably a bit surprising how well the Neo G7 competes against the C2, but overall I'd still give the edge to the OLED panel, especially when viewing in pitch black conditions. That's just a verdict on the dimming ability too. The Neo G7 isn't as well calibrated for HDR as the C2 and is less tunable, which plays into how well each display can actually show HDR and edges my recommendation further into OLED territory. Aside from this, it's important to remember that OLED panels have the risk of permanent burn-in and lower peak brightness than most true HDR LCDs. Though for this battle, the brightness differences are closer than with other products that I've tested.
On the flip side, the Neo G7 has terrible viewing angles, so Bloom is much easier to spot when you're not viewing it perfectly dead on, which isn't really an issue with the OLEDs. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you want to support the channel, Monitors Unboxed, then subscribing is a great way to do that. Please subscribe. Uh, and thanks to everyone that has subscribed so far. has been watching a lot of the content here on this channel. We also do have our Patreon float plane. Links to in the description below. Uh, we do use that money for buying a lot of the monitors that we're testing. In particular for this video, LG C2, Neo G7. We bought both of those products using our Patreon and float plane supporter funds. So thanks very much to those people who support us and allow us to make videos like this. I guess that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.